it can be a challenge trying to get a computer from the early 80s running. Not only do you have the problem of whether it actually still works, you have the difficulty of connecting up to modern displays, as well as trying to find proprietary old peripherals that you can plug in that still work. Storage can be particularly problematic. Not only are old storage devices bulky, slow, electromechanical things that don't hold much data, but after 30 to 40 years, belts can stretch, heads go out of alignment, and motors wear out. And even if the device itself still works, you have to find a supply of old media that don't have errors. Finally, something I think that's particularly important. Getting hold of old software these days is a lot simpler than passing around floppy disks or tapes in the school playground. Most old titles are abandonware and are freely available for your vintage computer, easily downloaded from the internet. However, whilst it's easy to get hold of the files themselves, it's often not easy or convenient to write something to a tape or proprietary old disk format on a modern computer. Thankfully, nowadays, there are a lot of options for connecting modern storage devices to old computers and have them emulate the tape recorders and disk drives of the time. And today we're going to have a look at the Elk SD64, which lets you plug SD cards into an Acorn Electron. We're going to start with how to install it and then move on to how to use it, and then later on we'll cover some of the technical details about how it works and some of the things it can do besides just let you plug SD cards into your computer. The Elk SD64 is designed and sold by a guy in Scotland on eBay. It arrives in an anti-static bag, and inside you'll find a small cartridge that's roughly the same colour as the Electron. On the front is an edge connector to plug it into the computer, and on the back is a full-size SD card slot. Installing the Elk SD64 couldn't really be much simpler. The first thing to do is to remove the power cord from the side of the Electron, as it has no power switch and you have to plug all the uh, peripherals on the back in with the power turned off. Then you should remove the small plastic cover if you still have that on the expansion connector. And finally you take the cartridge and it has a small notch to make sure you put it the right way around. Uh, give it a good firm press and it will plug in there and stay on. Once it's on you can see that it sticks out of the electron a fair bit but once it's placed flat on the table you'll barely notice it. Once you're done reconnect the power cord and hopefully you should hear the familiar beep and then you're ready to go. Once it's powered on it's immediately obvious something's happened to your electron. The usual two line startup saying Acorn Electron and Basic underneath has expanded to four. The second line tells you that the Electron Multimedia Card Filing System ROM is active, using the Electron Printer Port interface and running out of sideways RAM. This is the software for the SD card filing system and device driver. We'll talk more about what the sideways RAM bit means later. The third line tells you that the Retro Hardware Plus One Utilities ROM is available. We'll cover those later too. And finally, and more subtly, the first line says 64K at the end, telling you that the stock 32K RAM in the Electron has been expanded to 64K. If we try and do something to access the contents of a card, like Star Cat, which displays the catalogue of files on a disk, we helpfully get told there's no card in the slot right now. The multimedia card filing system supplied with the Elk SD64 doesn't let you just read and write individual files on the SD card. Instead, it simulates a library of 512 virtual 200KB DFS format floppy disk images. DFS, the disk filing system, is slightly unusual on the Electron as the standard disk interface, the Plus 3, was supplied with ADFS, the advanced disk filing system. However, on the BBC Micro, the Electron's big brother, DFS was much more common and it's generally much more useful. The library is simulated by a single 100 megabyte file stored in the top level directory of the SD card called beeb.mmb. The SD card has to be no larger than 8 gigabytes and must be formatted with the FAT32 file system. There's no way to create the beep.mmb file on the Electron. You have to use a more modern computer to do that, something like a PC, Mac or Raspberry Pi. There are two main ways to do it. The first is to use the MMB tools package, which contains a Perl script you can run to create a blank file, then copy disk images into and out of it. Much easier, however, is to download the sample file from the seller's website and copy it to your card. This contains some utilities and a selection of games to get you started. Once you've got your card inserted and some disk images on it, you can now use StarCat to get a catalogue of the first virtual disk. You can load and run basic programs with Chain just like you can from the set. If you don't know Acorn 8-bit systems, there are language-specific commands, such as in basic you get Chain, List and Print and so on, and then there are operating system commands such as Cat, commonly called Star commands, because they can be accessed from any language or application, usually by proceeding them with an asterisk. Another star command is help, which will show the extension ROMs loaded and tell you the topics under which you can get further information. For MMFS, there are dutils, which are commands for managing the library of virtual disks, 
MMFS itself for the regular filing system commands, and utils for some useful filing system utilities which are provided by MMFS but work on all filing systems. You can abbreviate help as H dot so you can quickly get a list of all the available commands for managing the filing system. For MMFS, these are the same as DFS on a BBC Micro. If you're familiar with those, you'll feel right at home. The dutils commands are the ones used to manage the library of virtual disks. Star dcat lists all the disks in the library by number and title. We can check the currently inserted disks with star d drive. Like DFS, MMFS supports four drives numbered 0 to 3. These are the numbers on the left, preceded by colons. The numbers and names on the right are the library disk numbers and titles. On power up and after control break, these are 0 to 3. The star d in command inserts a particular disk into the drive. You can also insert a disk by name instead of number, as well as specify the drive number other than the current. To create a new virtual disk, you first select the drive you want to use, and then enter the star dop end command. You can specify a particular disk number or let it allocate the first free one in the library as here. Like a real floppy, it starts out unformatted and must be formatted before you can use it. Once formatted, the disk can be named with star title. The new disk will show up in the catalogue of disks with star dcat. Once you're done with the disk, it can be erased with star dopk for kill. OK, now that we've seen the SD card interface in action, it's time to have a look at the other features the Elk SD64 has. We'll start with a deep dive into the Electron's memory system, as that's key to understanding how it works and what the other features are useful for. The 6502 processor in the Electron has a 16-bit address bus and can address a total of 64 kilobytes of memory directly. The top 16K of this is the Acorn MOS ROM, the Electron's operating system. The next 16K down is the BBC Basic ROM. This gives the Electron its total of 32K of ROM. And finally, the bottom half of the memory is the 32K of RAM. The paged or sideways RAM area is the part where BASIC is, from 32K to 48K in the memory map. The Electron has some special hardware to swap in different banks of 16K memory at this spot, such as a filing system or application. And, as well as ROM, some of these pages can be extra RAM. The MOS, as well as user programs, can control this hardware to change which bank is available at any particular time, rather like pages in a book. It now should be obvious why it's called sideways ROM and RAM. When running from one application, a user can enter an operating system command to select another. The MOS will then ask the ROMs if this command applies to them and then switch in the appropriate program. Also, when an application asks the operating system to do certain tasks, such as save a file to disk, the MOS can temporarily switch in the filing system page, write the data to disk and then, when it's done, swap back to the application and continue. All this happens pretty much transparently to the application and the clever design of the MOS shows it was thought of from the beginning, rather than bodged on later as with many other computers that use the same trick. OK, so looking at the Elk SD64, it contains 64K of memory and provides four banks, numbered C to F in hex, 12 to 15 in decimal. The basic ROM is built into the Electron as bank B, 11 decimal. C and D are RAM and E and F are flash memory, which is treated as ROM by the Acorn MOS, as there was no such thing when it was made. The flash can only be overwritten with a special aftermarket utility. Bank F contains the plus one utilities ROM, which we'll talk about later. Bank E contains a version of the MMFS code with a special bootstrap loader. This version of MMFS can't run directly from ROM, but must be copied to RAM, which the bootstrap loader does upon power-up. It copies itself into the hired numbered bank of RAM that is free, bank D, leaving bank C of RAM unused. So why does it do that, especially as MMFS can run directly from ROM? Well, let's go back to the memory map and the bottom 32k of RAM. Starting right at the bottom, the MOS gobbles up the bottom 3.5k of RAM for workspace. This finishes at hex E00, which is where page is normally set in BASIC, the location from where the program is stored. The top of the RAM, from 32k downwards, is where the screen memory is stored. The Electron supports a number of different display modes that use between 8k for a text-only screen, up to 20k for a high-resolution or multicoloured graphics mode. The bottom of this memory is called high mem and is where the stack in BASIC grows down from. The part between the two is free for programs and data, and, depending on the screen mode, varies between 20.5 down to 8.5k free, which isn't much left of 32k, one of the main criticisms of the Electron and the BBC Micro. 
This is what you have in a tape-only electron configuration. However, if you install a disk system or MMFS, it gets worse. They need a bit more memory for workspace and eat almost 3K more of memory, leaving you between only just under 18 and 6K of RAM free. Going back to the sideways area and bank D where the MMFS code was copied to, the MMFS code actually uses less than 13.5K, leaving a little bit of spare RAM at the top. This space can be used to store the data that would have been held in main RAM area for MMFS. The numbers don't quite add up here and there are 256 bytes left unaccounted for, so I'm going to ignore that. So, going back to the main memory map, we can move that workspace up and release some of the lower 32k of RAM, getting page back down to where it would have been if MMFS were not present and we just had a tape system. This is more useful than just getting a couple of k of extra RAM. Although the operating system allowed programs to find out what memory was available, many programs, especially games, were written in assuming they had the entire memory available and crash or are unable to run if a disk system was installed. Freeing up this memory allows much of that tape-only software to run with MMFS. OK, now we're all up on sideways ROM and RAM, we can have a look at the plus one utilities ROM that's included in Flashbank F in the ALK SD64. You can get help on the commands this provides with star help plus one. There are some more commands under different topics. Those tend to either duplicate the cross-filing system utilities included with MMFS, like star type to display text files, or are aliases of the plus one commands for compatibility with other utility ROMs. The ROM started out as a replacement for the one included with the Electron's Plus One hardware expansion unit, which provided physical cartridge slots for adding ROMs as well as adding a printer and analog joystick port. The ROM also adds commands for managing sideways ROMs and RAM, which are very useful to make use of that spare bank C of RAM. Some of the commands are used to manage the right protect lock on a battery-backed RAM board, but those aren't applicable to the ELK SD64 and don't do anything useful. You can list the sideways banks with star ROMs. The bank numbers are shown in hex at the start and are followed by type of memory that is in that bank, in between the brackets. The S indicates a service ROM, which is one that offers extra facilities, such as new star commands, or extends the operating system. The Acorn MOS was fantastically well written for its time and supported multiple legal ways to extend the operating system with new filing systems and so on. This is how things like MMFS work so seamlessly. An L indicates a language ROM, which is one that provides a programming language or application. BASIC is the obvious one of these in Bank B, but the plus one ROM in Bank F is also one that provides a command line interface for entering star commands. The final letter is R if the slot is RAM rather than ROM and can be overwritten. You can see that the MMFS software in Bank D is RAM and the bootstrap loader in E is ROM. You can load in a ROM image to the bank C from a file on one of the virtual disks on the SD card. Here I've loaded in the basic editor, a full screen program editor from Drive 3 directory R. Once loaded, you'll need to push break to force the MOS to reinitialize and load the ROMs, and I can see it with star help. I can now run the editor with star BE, enter a program, and run it. If I want to enter the basic editor on break, I can use the plus one command star lang c to select it as the default language. Star roms will show an inverted star next to the selected language, and now the computer will start up in the editor on control break. To revert back, I can use star lang b to restore basic as the default language. All these changes just affect software configuration and will be lost on power off. And finally, if you don't like the Plus One Utilities ROM, the utility can be downloaded from the Elk SD64 website to reflash bank F with a ROM of your choice, but bear in mind you'll lose the extra commands. If you have an Acorn Electron, it's hard not to recommend the Elk SD64. It gives you all the advantages of having a disk drive and a big box of disks without actually having to have a disk drive and a big box of disks. All you need to supply is an SD card and you plug it in and away you go. You get the SD card reader, plus some extra sideways RAM and some utilities to boot. If you have a plus one with your Electron, you can't use the Elk SD64, but instead you can use its sister product, the Elk SD plus one. I might cover that later, but that has the same SD card slot, plus one bank of 16k sideways RAM. The Elk SD64 is ideal if you want to see how good your memory is at some BBC basic programming, or perhaps even try some 6502 assembler or maybe even experience them for the first time. 
You can also try out those old applications you couldn't get hold of back in the day. But I suspect many people will just download the demo file, press shift break to boot it up, and then choose a nostalgic game. Still, I don't suppose there's any harm in that. <laughs> 